This is the story of the new ship. One day in 1839, Robert Slater set off to pay the quarterly contribution from the Wesleyan Church on Jep Hill in Barn Oswick to the circuit meeting of the Wesleyan Church in Combe. But when he placed the money on the table, one official said, Is that all you brought? There's not much there. This and other observations made at the meeting caused Robert Slater to feel very uncomfortable. When he got back to Barn Oswick, he reported what had happened to the leaders and members of Jep Hill Chapel. They considered the various remarks made by the official at the circuit meeting to be, as they put it, completely out of place and bordering on incivility. In 1839 times were very hard for the handloom weavers of Barlick, and many had done their best to support their chapel. However, the leading officials of the circuit, instead of trying to heal the wounds, somehow managed to add insult to injury, resulting in almost half the congregation of thirty members handing in their resignations. They were now in something of a dilemma. They needed somewhere to worship, and one George Pickup willingly opened his house for the purpose. The local minister, seeing his own church half empty, seeking no doubt to frighten them back, preached the now historic sermon of St. Paul and the shipwreck. The text from Acts 27 verse 31 reads, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. The meaning for those who had resigned was clear. Stay with the church, or all would be lost. One of the preachers who had withdrawn from the chapel examined the same chapter from which the text had been taken, in order to find a reply sermon. He found exactly what he wanted in verse 22. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there would be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. That meaning was also clear. So with great passion and enthusiasm, as well as great popular support for those who had resigned from the church, it was resolved they would build for themselves a new ship. And it's been called a new ship ever since. They had very little money, but they were willing to do their best. Some gave their labour, others even begged the funds. And one man was willing to lend the then princely sum of £300, leaving just £100 to find. Within a year they built the Westgate Chapel, including two cottages and it was opened in March 1840 by a Miss Emmett of Cowling. It wasn't long before the buildings were extended to meet the needs of a growing congregation. In 1891, building started on the construction of the present new ship. It cost £4,900 and seated 750 people. It was opened in October 1893, with the Sunday school next door opening in 1911, with accommodation for 500 scholars. Well, I'm now inside what is really quite a remarkable building, and I have with me Geoffrey Pearson. Geoffrey, tell me something about this building. Uh, the main problem was dry rot, <laughs> which affected the whole of the roof. Uh, and you can see where it's affected timbers on this side, and the, the windows and, and uh, all the pews. So what uh, have you had to and, do about so it? So we had a first, we, when we got to a grade, to star listing, we were eligible to apply for grants and the English Heritage were very sympathetic and they said, like you, it's a building that shouldn't be pulled down, it should be saved if possible. Mm -hmm. But things were getting in a bad way that if it was left another year or so, it, would, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have uh, been economical to attempt to, uh, to repair. So the first phase was called Stop the Rot, which meant taking all the slates off the roof, repairing the roof timbers. We had scaffolding all around the building and they had enough money to do all the pointing. They did that, uh, a part of the pointing, mm. to keep the water out and make sure that a lot of the problems where water had got in into the wall, as you can see down there, that was probably through gutters, water mm. sink, uh, sinking through the... Uh, thick stone walls. But now you've got the roof fixed. So the roof, that was stage one then, and they gave us an equivalent grant and did the windows mm. and the rest of the pointing outside and, and the, I think they checked the drains and things. This beautiful building has many surprises and survivals from long ago. The magnificent organ was originally hand-pumped, as Geoffrey Pearson illustrates in this shot. Then there's the detail in the carving like this newel post at the foot of the stairs leading to the upper gallery.
The new ship is a remarkable survival and will for many years to come remain part of our common heritage.